Hey everyone, today we're going to check out the Solomon X Ultra 4 GTX. It is a great option for your local trails and shorter overnight hikes. We found it to be a really great overall shoe in general. Let's see if it's the right one for you. If you're new to the channel, my name's Roxy and I'm part of the Adventure Junkies team. We help people like you choose the right gear to get outdoors. If you want to learn more, go ahead and visit the website at www.theadventurejunkies.com. Now for what you really came for, the Solomon X Ultra 4 GTX. It's a mouthful. All right, let's take a look at this shoe. Uh, and it's currently in the box, but I have actually already taken, out, taken them out and tested them a ton. So um, this is not quite how they come. They have uh, paper stuffed inside of them, good for travel, but uh, I have already uh, put a few miles on these guys. They do still look nice um, And they come with some tags that have already come off so I could wear them around outside So this is the low top version and it retails for 150 bucks uh, US dollars They're imported from Vietnam and available in women's sizes 5 to 11 and not available in wide So this is your only option this standard um, width of this shoe Solomon recommends sizing down for this shoe. I am a size nine. I ordered a size nine. I would not recommend sizing down. This uh, shoe fit me really well. Um, great. I like a little bit of space in the toe box. I am probably an eight and a half, like truly, but I ordered nines across the board because um, I like a little bit of room for my foot to expand and to just feel uh, like my toes have room I would not really recommend a size down. This nine fits across the board like other nines as well. So uh, I know it says that on their site. That would not be my personal recommendation. These are available in five color options. This is the black stormy weather opal blue. So uh, you can see the different color variations along the sides here and this little pull tab on the back. And then the black is the overall color. Other options include alloy, Quiet Shade Burnt Sienna, that's all one option, so that's gonna be the three different colors on here. Lunar Rock, Ebony, and Mint Leaf is another color option, uh, three-way color option. Mocha Mousse, Black and Almond Cream, and then lastly, Crystal Blue, Black, and Cumin. <laughs> so they've got some really creative color names here. It would probably be best to go on their website and sort of check out what they mean by each of those colorways. Uh, it is just changing these two accent colors right here and then the overall color on top. Uh, but <laughs> those are some very poetic descriptions of the different colors that you can get. In terms of weight, the Solomon X Ultras are pretty lightweight. Uh, this is a size 9, but the size 7 is 1.37 pounds, which is 621 grams. And that is lighter than many of the competitors on the market. So similar type shoes, it is lighter than those. Uh, so you are getting a nice lightweight feel when you wear these. So let's take a look at this lace system. It's a quick lace system, so it's pretty different from most shoes out there. Um, it's like a little bit like a boa system, but not quite as efficient, I guess. Uh, there are concerns about durability in the fields uh, and doing repairs in the field. So if something like this snaps, it would be harder to just tie it together like a normal lace system. I personally like the speed of it. It, it was nice to be able to pull and pull, uh, but I wasn't so into how it locked your foot into the shoe. I still had a little heel rise and it would be nice to have some variability in the lacing system in order to lace it in different ways. Say if you have that heel rise, you could lace it higher up to position your foot into the shoe a little more securely. Also, I found that you need to, when you're tightening it, you tighten the bottom half and sort of hold it in place and then tighten the top half. You can't just pull and pull down and lock it only tightens the top if you do that which also could be uh, beneficial for some people if they really like a looser lower system and then it also has uh, this tuck in here in the tongue so you lace it up and then you pull and then you tuck under and through so then this quick lace system is hidden 
inside here. So it shouldn't come undone. You shouldn't trip over it. It's tucked out of the way. It's not going to affect the fit of the shoe. It's pretty easy to tuck in and out, take on and off. I found even when I tighten them all the way, I could still just like sort of kick them off, slide them off. Uh, but I do like that they have a system where to put this dongle so it's not just flapping around when you're running or fast hiking or even just regular hiking. So it is nice and secure. It feels once it's all tightened and locked, then it does feel pretty secure. So this shoe does have a waterproof liner and as the name suggests, GTX, it does have a Gore-Tex booty uh, to it. So it is rather waterproof. And uh, in addition to the Gore-Tex, it has a DWR treatment on the outside area. So hopefully it stops water before it can even get to the Gore-Tex liner. That being said, uh, Gore-Tex claims it's a breathable material and I've seen uh, examples of fans blowing through it before but these were a warmer shoe. Uh, wearing them around, you can tell that there's a Gore-Tex liner. It does heat your foot up a bit. If you are hiking in swampy areas or a lot of river crossings, and it's important to have that waterproofness, this could be a really great pick. They are low tops though, so you can't dunk your foot. Even if, you, if they're waterproof and you get below water level, water's gonna come in over these sides. And then with that Gore-Tex liner, it is stuck in there. So <laughs> it is like a double-edged sword. They are nice and waterproof, but um, they make your foot a little hot and sweaty and it's harder to dump that heat because it's meant to keep water out. So it does keep water in as well. So a lot of shoes out on the market are using welded construction instead of stitching now. And the difference here, you can see this area here is welded as compared to this stitching. And the welding helps uh, with durability. It helps so you can't break these the stitching and uh, the shoe won't last as long. And there is some mild concern about the durability of the welding, but we've taken these out in the field for quite a few miles and they have stay, uh, stood the test. And um, just looking through a ton of reviews online, I haven't seen any problems with the welding coming undone after many miles. So um, the welding seems to hold true. And then there is just a few bits of stitching on this shoe, which I haven't any problems with either. Solomon offers a two year limited warranty on these shoes and to fill out a claim, you can head to their website and fill out a claim form. It's pretty easy. So moving on to some of the features on the outside of the shoe, this is anti-debris mesh along the outside uh, between the tongue and the toe cap and also up along the sides of each, uh, each side of the shoe. And this is to keep debris out but also have it remain breathable. So it's nice if you're hiking in dusty or uh, conditions with a lot of tiny rocks, they are not going to make their way into the shoe between you and the outer of the shoe or the sole. It doesn't have much protection around the toe box, but we do have a nice uh, hard rubber toe cap here. So you'll get protection if you're climbing or on um, sharp rocks or anything, you'll have that to protect the tips of your toes. The tongue is also uh, has this debris fabric. Let's see if I can pull it down here. Uh, the tongue is also not you can't see, I'm holding the tongue right now on my hand. Uh, it's not connected to any of the sides of the shoe except down at the bottom. So if you are someone who t the tongue often slides, that could be an issue with this shoe. Uh, while I was hiking in it, it did slide a little bit to my left on each one, not enough to be bothersome. It didn't break between here, but it did do a little sliding. So if that issue happens to you on other shoes, this could also be an issue wearing these Solomons. Moving to the back of the shoe, this is the advanced chassis and this helps keep the shoe stable while also allowing it to be flexible and mobile. Uh, while we're on the subject, let's sort of chat about the mobility of this shoe. It's got nice movement in the ball of the shoe and pretty solid no movement in the back. Uh, not much lateral movement. Pretty much only that toe is lifting up. And we do have a pretty thick uh, sole, midsole here. So that would make sense that there's only movement up at the top where the midsole is a little thinner. 
So this is a pretty supportive shoe, and one of the things that helps support it is this ortholite sole. I will pull this out. So here you can see the sole piece. You can definitely feel this when you put the shoe on, and you can feel where it's supported or where it gives you room. And I would definitely uh, suggest trying this on because it does give you support in certain places where if your foot wasn't uh, built or liked that kind of support, that would give you problems. But otherwise, it is, it is like a hug. It's, you put your foot in there and it really does feel like it's molding to your foot. Uh, and it's nice and cushioned. So you are getting a really solid ground feel, even if you're on un uneven ground or uh, large rocks, you're gonna get a solid step with each step. It's really well supported. It does have mid-level support. Uh, I felt it was more than that, but uh, I am used to l a less amount of support, so this felt pretty, pretty hefty when I was hiking in it. So we did mention the toe box a little bit. This has a pretty normal toe box, a normal sized toe box. It's not anything wider than normal. It's not going to squeeze your feet. I thought it was super comfortable. A wider toe box is great for if you're hiking really long distances and your foot is going to expand. And a smaller toe box is great if you want that really added stability. Your foot's going to just hug your toes there and you can really feel the ground under your shoe. Uh, this toe box is middle of the line. I would say I could still wiggle my toes in there, but it wasn't like totally squeezing them, which is a fit that I like. So I was pleasantly surprised with uh, the toe box. It does look a little thinner, I'd say, this cutoff here uh, than those normal wider toe boxes, but I still felt like I had room. We did talk about how these shoes are a little hot. You can definitely feel, feel your foot heating up in it. If you're looking for that waterproofness, that is going to be something that's hard to avoid. So <laughs> it does come with the nice waterproofness of the shoe is your foot is going to be a little bit more hot as you hike. If you're in the desert with no water and there's no chance of any water anywhere, this is not going to be your shoe pick <laughs> because your foot will just like sweat the shoe off. It <laughs> would not be great. But if you are in like swampy northeast or something, this is going to be a really great shoe because you're going to encounter a lot of wet areas and also it's going to be a little cooler. So this would be a really great pick for that type of area where you don't want your socks to be wet as you're hiking. Hiking with these, because they're made with mostly synthetic material, there is a very little break-in period. I would say they are pretty close to how they're going to feel the first time you put them on. Nothing's going to stretch or wear. Uh, it's all going to really stay in place. So if you put these on and they feel great, then this could be a really good shoe for you. If you put them on, there's a ton of hot spots. I'm not sure those are going to go away very quickly with a break-in. So just keep that in mind as you're trying these on. Uh, because of all the synthetic material, You, what you feel is what you get. <laughs> so let's talk about the sole of the shoe. Solomon uses chevron lugs under here. So that's the shape of the lug sort of coming to a point over here. And they also have uh, all-terrain contagrip, which is... Uh, built for a wide variety of surfaces and we found these shoes to be pretty sticky. Uh, we really enjoyed ch testing them out on rock, wet rock, whatever it was. They really did have a good grip. Uh, some reviews have online have complained about these lugs wearing down pretty quickly. We did not find that to be an issue. Uh, maybe once we get 100-200 uh, miles in that could be a problem but for now they've really held up as we've tested them. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button so more people like you can find it. So just to demo these shoes a bit, I'm gonna put them on. Here's the lacing system. It is a two-part uh, system. I don't think they meant it like that, but you really do have to tighten the bottom and then tighten the top to get them totally tight. If you like a looser uh, lace at the bottom, then you'd really only have to pull the top. It just depends on your preference. Otherwise, pretty simple to lace and then tuck uh, the dongle into the tongue. Solomon states that these run large, but I really like the fit of them. I wear a nine, these are a nine, and I would stick with this size. I would not size down. They are pretty comfy. The Ortholite insole makes it pretty comfy. It does have some raising 
of the arch and near the other parts of the foot near the uh, toe box. So you should definitely try these on before purchasing because uh, if those create hot spots for you, those will not go away. Um, they do not have that long of a break in period. They are pretty supportive. They really hug your foot and they have a pretty hefty uh, outsole and midsole. They are super grippy, which is really nice for climbing wetter rocks or in damp areas. And the Gore-Tex liner booty and DWR coating keep them super waterproof. And uh, we will test that out with a um, spray bottle to show you guys how the water beads off. Just to recap a few things here, the Solomon X Ultra 4 GTX can be purchased for 150 US dollars. It's at size seven, it weighs 1.37 pounds or 621 grams. So this is really a good all around hiking shoe. If you wanna do trail running, something like that, this is not gonna be a good pick for you. And uh, it's not gonna be great if you are traveling through the desert or hot arid areas without a lot of water. The things I really love about this shoe are the comfort. It was really nice putting on right away and then it doesn't have a huge break in period. I liked the room in the toe box. Uh, I like how grippy the sole is. Things that I was not fond of is the lacing system can take a bit to get used to and the tucking is a little clunky. Uh, so I'm not super into um, the fact that you can only lace it in one way. So if you have a hot spot or something, you can't adjust the laces in order to alleviate that hot spot. I had some heel slippage in these shoes. So oftentimes I will lace differently to account for the heel slippage and that just isn't possible here. I did like the really big loop to pull these on. That made it easier because once you do lace it, you can pull them on and off. I was not super into how hot it made my feet. <laughs> But I do like that they are super waterproof. So if that is something you're looking for in a great hiker, then uh, I would trade the warmer feet in order for a nice dry, a drier foot <laughs> as you're hiking in swampier or wetter areas. <laughs> Happy hiking. Hope you enjoy. Hey everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have ever wasted money on gear in the past or just don't know what gear to buy, I really want to recommend this book. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Hiking Gear, and it has breakdowns and explanations of all the gear you'll need to get safely outside. It's organized into gender, size, weight, what type of hike you'll need it for, uh, and it's really helpful for any beginner out there or even someone who's more advanced but wants more suggestions on how to enjoy your time outside. You can buy it at Amazon and it's available in both paperback and Kindle. Go ahead and click the link below in the description and check it out. Moving over to the back of the shoe, this is the Advanced Chassis? Chase, chassis? Chassis? Lunar Rock, Ebony, Lunar Rock Ebony Mint Leaf. Other options include, Al oh my gosh, Quiet Shade Burnt Sienna. Other options include Alloy, Alloy. Other options include Alloy, Burnt Sienna, Quiet Shade. Other options include.